Welcome back to the Performance Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Calandrino. I'm owner of Beyond Commercial. I've been doing this for almost a decade and a half. And along the way, I've met some impactful and influential leaders. The goal of the Performance Mindset Podcast is to share these stories as well as some business and commercial real estate trends. If you're looking to grow, you're tuning into the right show. I have with me today someone I could actually call a friend of mine, Veronica Malolos, and she is here in Central Florida as well. She has her own commercial real estate brokerage called Capstack, correct? And uh, she is also a CCIM. She is proudly wearing her pin today. Shame on me for not wearing mine. Uh, We may talk a little bit about what is CCIM once we get this rolling. Um, and she actually has her own podcast now, and she's really involved with the National Association of Realtors, uh, as well as Florida Realtors, as well as a lot of other things. So uh, rather than getting too nitty gritty into her biography, I want to just get this show started. So welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Amy. Right. I am super excited to be here, especially because, like you said, we have some very, very interesting ways that we're tied together. So thank you for having me. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about CCIM first and foremost, because you're in commercial real estate, but what kind of makes you special is that you are a CCIM. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? So CCIM is an actual oh. designation that is earned and i say that because we both know that it's a very difficult designation to achieve and i'm just so happy that uh, i wear the pin and ccim although it stands for certified commercial investment member it is really the experts of commercial real estate so you amy have been a print or past president of the florida ccim central district And funny enough, or luckily enough, I am actually serving as president in 2025. So it's an amazing group and it's been a game changer in my career. It's been awesome. When I became president in 2020, um, in late 2019, I was like, I want to establish a downline uh, that, you know, if all works out, these are the folks that are going to, you know, rise to, to presidency. And one thing I wanted to do is we didn't have a secretary and I felt like we added a secretary, then, you know, we would have more influence, you know, moving forward and more continuity and they would have more training at the executive level. So uh, the current president is like the last person I had anything, uh, anything to do with, but um, it's been cool to see, you guys have been doing great. We've had, you guys have had record, um, record attendance. And, you know, we, I think we're still the largest district in the state of Florida. And I think Florida is still the largest chapter in the country. Correct. Correct. And we're still growing. So people like you, we are really standing on the shoulders of giants like me and of course our past president. So we're very grateful for the opportunity to be able to serve our members. Yeah. So we are also power beacons. Do you want to talk a little bit about being involved as a power beacon and what that means to you? Sure. Well, absolutely. Fantastic opportunity to be a part of some very influential people from all over the country. Uh, The story for me of having been connected to the power beacon started about three years ago when I attended the C5 conference, which is, of course, hosted at that time by the National Association of Realtors. And there was a networking, sort of speed networking event that you sign up and get to connect with some people in the industry outside of brokerage. And that's how I sat across the table from Marissa Limchaco, who is the founder and CEO of OTSO, a fintech company. And she's Filipino, I'm Filipino. And so we really connected so well. And she eventually, as she created um, the most influential women in virtual estate, and invited me to Austin uh, back about then. I got an opportunity wow. to meet such fabulous women and just stay connected because we are not just a group of women who get together just to, we are advocates. 
And we can talk a little bit about the latest initiative. I'm, I'm super excited that we can cover that today. Yeah, so um, it's May. I don't know exactly when this podcast is going to drop, but um, we're still in the thick of conference season. I'm going to be at the SIOR conference next week. And then, of course, there's ICSC in Vegas, and there's still you know a lot of different conferences and industry events coming on. Um, but I think as Power Beacons, we've been talking a long time about bringing awareness um, to certain issues. And so do you want to talk a little bit about the campaign that we – have uh, launched together? Sure. So um, I'm I'm not really sure if a lot of your audience out there that uh, women in commercial real estate are really significantly a smaller population in a very white male dominated industry. And still today, even though people like you and me and all the other women who have stepped into commercial real estate have had some great success, we are really in the midst of trying to advocate for more safety for women in conferences. And the reason that we are really loud uh, advocates for safety is because of some of our um, counts actually have had some really bad experiences in, uh, in conferences where it's not safe for a woman because things that you normally would think does not happen anymore still happen. So we're advocating for safety by giving awareness, firstly, not just to women, but also to men, that these things still happen and that if we can be looking out for each other and making sure that we're at least advising other women to be very careful and not to assume that it's a safe environment and do certain steps like not sharing a, a drink with a stranger, sure that you you are not leaving your drink for instance on the counter as you go to the to the ladies room i mean simple things like those that i think for instance for me and we've just recently recorded an awareness video including uh yourself amy myself and and some other really great colleagues from power beacons i i'm even going to share that with the young women in my family because it's it happens everywhere and as we women try to step into an industry that, let's face it, a lot of industries that actually are very male-dominated, engineering, for instance, construction, that's another one. We want to make sure that women are aware that there are certain steps that you need to take to be safe so that you are not subjected to sexual harassment or abuse or even in some cases, you know, um, it's assault. So uh, that's really, really the, the thing that's exciting about what we're doing as the Power Beacons in advocacy. Well, the thing is, too, is it's not just even the people at the conference. Like when I was just in New York City last week, we had a lot of opportunities where we were going out and having drinks and, you know, obviously practicing these safety state steps of being with them. But there were opportunities where perhaps, um, you know, I had friends of mine that needed to go solo back to like our apartments or otherwise, but we would share our locations, you know, give me a message once you get back to there. And I think just, you know, keeping track of one another and making sure that you're okay, because one, you know, maybe you're with your group, and, um, but you know, if you're in Vegas or New York city or somewhere else, and then you get to, you know, apart from your group, you want to have someone that you can check, you know, check in with. And it, um, is being, and, and I enjoy now too, especially trying to stay with a group together. When I go to these industry events, it really just makes the experience even that much richer in my experience. Yes. And, and to the women who are tuning in to your show, I think that, Sometimes we are unaware when I say <laughs> because I'm way not young anymore. But yeah. for someone who's trying to enter an industry, I think we get too eat and our guards are down because we are so very um, anxious about becoming accepted or being welcomed mm -hmm. that we put our guards down. And before you know it, that's really a signal for someone to take advantage of you. So be very careful out there. 
I think we're willing to support other women. And you know, right? why not say to the next woman, you know what, can we kind of like, you know, sort of be together, watch for each other? Because I think that's better. So for the young women who are trying to break into this industry or any industry for that matter, just be careful because oftentimes, oftentimes we get so anxious about belonging that we put mm-hmm. our guard down. So it's so important that we connect with other women in meetings or conferences and just say to each other, let's watch out for each other. Yes, say first. Yes. Right. So that's yeah. that's what I would say. About and I think that, that. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I said, I think eagerness can sometimes get misconstrued as flirtatiousness too. And I know I went to like an after party in New York with uh, Casey Flannery. And afterwards, you know, there's a guy that was obviously kind of, and he's like, yeah, let's keep going and let's keep partying. You know, and we had been perfectly nice. And we're like, we're good. Thank you. Like, and we didn't say where we're going or anything like that. And, and there's many really good people and really good people. So that's not to say, and I would say the vast majority are good, but I think sometimes um, alcohol or different substances can inhibit people and, and cause, uh, you know, cause misjudgments and such. And so we just need to stay vigilant. I totally agree definitely. Stay vigilant. Yeah. You have your own commercial real estate brokerage. Do you want to talk about uh, putting that together and the evolution of it over time and uh, what you primarily do in that field? Sure. So I never thought that I would build my own commercial real estate company or a brokerage ever again because I did start my career with owning my own brokerage. And at that time, about 25 years ago, that was a residential brokerage. And brokerage is really a business from commercial real estate, because the truth is you have to manage people, you have to hire and uh, train and also brokers as you build your company. And so I thought I'd know the brokerage again, because it is a very difficult Um, and it has its own challenges. And so you almost have to wear two hats when you're producing as a commercial real estate broker and also as a manager, uh, CEO of your own brokerage. But the reason why I actually started my own commercial real estate company is in the beginning, I was asked to oversee a company and be partners with another, with a group. And um, eventually last year, They decided to pursue other opportunities. And so I actually now own my brokerage uh, exclusively by myself. Mm. But I still have my team. I have a team of uh, six right now. They're all specialists. And so, and they all, and, and so it's not been so very challenging as it was in the past. And so we're all, okay. um, we, we're like a family and we support each other. And, and I think that that's really key when you're having a team that work with um, in the, in a day-to-day, uh, you know, basis. So That's great. Like what type of different things do you do to help uh, have that kind of culture? Um, I think it's really important that when you are the CEO or or managing group, really more people know something about what's important to them. Because every person, well, you know, like I said, I treat my, my team like family, whether it be someone that I, I consider my my brother, my sister, or my child, I think every one of them are unique. And so mm-hmm. really putting the time to get to know them individually and know what's important to them is is really been helpful for me for the retention piece. Because if if I can make them feel special and valued and important, I think they feel connected to my company and to my company culture, they will always connect back with me 
And if they have any challenges, I want to make sure that I first validate that what's important to them is important to me. And that has really helped in building this culture of, of family within my company. That's amazing. Um, now you have the team and you each have your own specialties. It seems to me that you do a lot with land. Is that tends to be your specialty or is there other things that you um, focus a lot on? So I fell into the asset class, um, not by choice, but really by opportunity. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, when I first got into commercial real estate, there was an opportunity for me to represent a, one of the local governments here representing 110 acres of commercial assets. And, um, you know, that was how I began my commercial real estate career. I was mentored by another CCM, Denver, Apple County, then Crosby, who's now retired and consequently was, was mentored by Robin Webb, who was 2017 CCIM global president who hired me into NAI RealVest to take it out here. So land was really how I began my commercial real estate career. And it's it's really been good to me. And I think consequently, because I was appointed to the planning board of the county eventually, and I, I served on the planning board in the county for 10 years, the last three years uh -huh. of that, I was chair. I was chair for the last the first minority woman to be chair of the planning board in the county, it's really, really expanded my knowledge base on entitlements. And so it's it's almost a natural sort of um, asset class for me to be specialized in because I do know a lot of government uh, officials. And, and so that helps because of my service to the county and also to the two cities that are in Osceola County. Uh, the city of Kissimmee and also the city of St. Cloud. Uh, aside from uh, Osceola County, I've actually served as their broker, all three of them, uh, over the years. I think that it helps that I wow. have those networks so that if any of my um, investors or any of my clients actually have some kind of challenges that they needed to overcome with entitlements or permitting, that at least I serve as that liaison to be able to get answers quickly mm -hmm. and to be able to move a transaction in a very expeditious way. Yeah, it's um, it relationships. It very much is a relationship business. I've had several friends like say that, and I, I think that it is it is very much that. And you could never discount whether it's the person at the front desk at the planning and zoning or whoever it is. I think um, being kind. Um, and gracious to, to everyone that you meet that will come back to benefit you, um, no matter what asset class you're in or whatever business that you're in, it, it, it's, it's paramount. It is paramount. So, and it sounds like that's come back for you time and time again. Oh, absolutely. I just received a phone call last week Cancun on vacation. And of course you're never really on vacation. So I always monitor my phone and, and a call came in and it was a, an operator, a business operator out of St. Cloud, who said to me that someone at the at the planning uh, planning division had asked her to contact me because because I was the one that could help them. And he she even <laughs> said, I don't really know why I'm calling yeah. you, but he <laughs> served this this uh, local customer, uh, this customer to one of my agents. And, and that has been a phenomenal thing. Like I said, it's come back to me many, many times of how I've served uh, the county and the local governments and, and my community. And community has been very, very good to me. Yeah, it's incredible. I, I never would have thought like 10 years ago that someone at the at, at like the government level would then throw my name in the hat, a hat which would like they come across brokers all the time. I feel like that is like one of the highest compliments. So, you know, I've had that happen to me now, like in the city of Winter Park, you know, because I'm more north, I'm in the adjoining county and do a lot in that area. And I was like, really? Like, thank you. Like, so it's so wonderful to to know that you 
you're not only doing a great job for your clients, but the work that you're doing for them and the people that you're interacting with, um, they're seeing the good that you're doing and then can recommend you. Well, and, and following up with that, I, I think that that's the reason why social media is also so very important as commercial real estate um, yeah. uh, practitioners is because you have to make sure that you're top of mind to everybody in your community. And so you actually do have to let people know who you are and what you do and and how you're very entrenched in your community. So to all of you out there, performance mindset, right? Uh, make sure that you're strategically thinking about how you can plug yourself into your own local community. It's uh, so one of our fellow power beacons, like Sarah Malcolm said, you know, the new trend is CEOs really need to have that brand presence and brand awareness. And and really show show who they are. And I was interviewing a marketing intern just a little bit ago, and she said that it, it really is, you know, spot on. And I think one of the things you're you're doing a great job with your social media, um, and you have your podcast. Do you want to talk a little bit about um, how do you manage that? You know, how do you come up with topics and talk about a little bit of the ide- ideation and what you've seen kind of come from that. Sure. And um, I think Amy is my role model as far as testing, because I remember we had that Power Beacons uh, meeting and you had mentioned about your podcast. And I remember also we were at a meeting, uh, an in-person meeting. And as we walked out the door, somebody stopped you and said, performance mindset podcast. And I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing how you have brand yeah. recognition. And that you're actually inspiring other people. And so for me, and this is a story that I've told several times over and over again, uh, my daughter, who's going to be 21 this year, she's uh, almost done with college, and her girlfriends were actually at her dining table. And we talked a little bit about men and what's out there in social media. And they said they sometimes search for, say, just a women's only story or or something that might uh might inspire them and they couldn't find anything it's very limited but that was the purpose of i wanted to do a women influencers podcast is to bring stories of women like you for instance amy and we'll have your your episode uh in the podcast soon i i wanted to make sure i had an opportunity to share stories of women who actually have overcome challenges and with just sheer will and fortitude are able to get a day. So, so it's really just a very simple storytelling podcast sort of format. And it's more of an inspirational and motivational podcast more than anything else. Yeah, I, I think it's great the work you're doing. And I've had the opportunity to listen uh, to a few episodes and um, it's been really great. And I, you know, I spoke to earlier that there's wonderful advocates of women. And I think you even had um, your pa- uh, Robin Webb on your, who's the first non-woman on the podcast. But, you know, I think it's important, even if you have a, you know, women's podcast, if there are people that we have that are out there advocating for us to, to hear those stories and um, maybe, inspire other people to to be an advocate for for women because we have unique issues we have unique things whether it's child rearing um or otherwise um i think it's important to get those stories out there absolutely for sure yes i agree with you 100 percent. yes so um all right. So I think we've got to actually see, I told you we'd cover all the things we were thinking about. But what advice would you give to any kind of young women that are thinking about getting into uh, commercial real estate or, uh, or even the business field, but maybe specifically to commercial real estate, what advice would you give to them? So the best advice I could give you is to get educated in commercial real estate. Commercial real estate is not something that you can wing, right? You can't wing it. It's just not one of those things where you can just all of a sudden try to step into and because you're going to find out very quickly that it's a very, it's a much higher level of engagement than it is 
if you were to do any kind of other sales job. And it is a sales job, but it requires um, knowledge. Number one of your market, knowledge of commercial real estate, because remember that your clients are already sophisticated because they're either business owners or they're high income, um, you know, high net clients who already know what they want. And so if you can't hang, so to speak, because you are not knowledgeable, then the chances of you succeeding is probably very, very slim. And there are many sources of education, many organizations that can kind of launch you. CCIM, of course, is one of them. But but like what Amy said, she's also a member of SIOR, which, by the way, is a very exclusive club. And so congratulations to Amy. She's, she's really um, something else. I mean, she's not just CCIM. She's a, SIOR. But but SIOR is also, an, you can really just uh, get education from that organization as well. And of course, there's IRM. There, there are many that you can uh, get educated. And um, I think that that's the very first advice that I would give you. And, and learn how to network. And um, if you have a finance or accounting or business background, I think that that's a good start for you. Mm -hmm. It's not for everybody. Well, and I think it's great to get the education, but I love the example of you got this 110 acre land opportunity, but you're like, I'm not going to try to BS these people. I, I need to work, but you didn't give up the opportunity either. You're like, I'm going to use this as a learning opportunity and then look at where this, 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 this went. I find that there are times where these um, where other agents come to me and they're like, well, just give me the lender so I can close this deal. And I'm like, yeah, but you have to go through due diligence. You have to do all these other things. And if anything goes wrong, this is do or die for these investors or business owners. They are never, ever, ever going to go back to you again. And That's right. uh, let me tell you what, I think if your name ever comes up again, they'll tell other people to run from you. And so there's so much reputationally on the line with these deals that you owe it yourself. It's like, you know, I think you get this deal and you have a great deal, but maybe you're not perfectly situated for it yet. Say, Hey, you know, I know we have a great relationship. I want to guide you through this. I'm going to actually work with some, we're going to work together. So you're going to get two heads for the price of one. And we're, we're going to take mm -hmm. you through this and, and have this collaborative approach. And then I think it ends up being like a win win for everybody. Um, I always tell people I'd rather have a little bit of pie than no pie. And so right. you know, there's plenty of pie, like just don't try to be greedy and have the whole pie. It, you're going to end up having no pie later. <laughs> That's right. It's still, it's still better to get a little piece of something than all of nothing. Right. Oh, so of course we're on the performance mindset show. Can you talk about like, Ha uh, tactics that you use or different things that you use to, to keep your mindset? Sure. So uh, everybody goes through moments where they doubt themselves or they're thinking, should I even be going in that direction? And, and that's normal. But I think it's so important that you have a North Star. Make mm -hmm. sure that you know your priorities and that you're working towards them. One of the best books that I've ever read that has really impacted my life is, is not just the uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, but the book of Stephen Covey, which is first. And it's really amazing how we don't realize that we have many roles, that we, we're, we're mothers, we're wives, we are business people, we are managers, we're CEOs, we're, we're a lot of different things. We're, we're daughters and we are sisters. And so if you are able to identify the roles that you have in your life and then prioritize them and then mm -hmm. live a very calendar driven life. And I always talk about the big rocks, little rocks, uh, you know, concept by Stephen Covey where you want to make sure that your big rocks or your biggest priorities, whether it be family or your business, are in your calendar first. 
Right. And and then, you know, your your medium sized rocks would be those that are important to you, but not your top priority. They take up space in your calendar. And and that has been very helpful in making sure that I'm focused and that I'm able to really give a very quick go or no go decision and anything that comes my way. So I, I get asked to do quite a few things only because when people see that you volunteer here, you volunteer there, that <laughs> you're the first yep. person that they think of if they're looking. So you have to be so very mindful and intentional with your decisions to put something on your calendar. And that's how I, I live my life and keep my performance mindset. Because everything that happens in your life and every outcome really starts from between your ears, right? So yeah. so they say it's what's ever, whatever is in your mind is really what's going to be uh, to have an outcome in your life. So be, be very careful that you're not all over the place. Stay focused. And I meditate quite a bit. And sometimes oh. my husband has learned how to just reflect that. Because in the morning when I'm having coffee is when I really either pray first or really think about what I'm doing that's pointing to my priorities. And then I pair myself and prep myself for, for every little thing that I do during the day. Because every little thing just actually sums up into greater things. So make sure that you're not a lot of little things that don't amount to anything. Right. Yeah, it is important. And I, I find for me that I have to, I don't book myself every day and I leave myself flexibility because, you know, if an opportunity comes, that I want to say yes to, then I want to leave myself that flexibility. But if I, you know, I, I sometimes see people's calendars and they have every single day, every minute, like available. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Like for me, I, I, you know, I'll book phone calls and different things a couple of days a week and podcasts, you know, one day a week, I try to keep it for like Wednesdays and then I'm in the, in the mode. But, um, I think you, you just constantly switching gears. You're not necessarily giving the, your best to whatever it is that you're you're working on and um you know don't I, I think I I just I know I look busy but honestly I do give myself space because I want to have that time for uh the different roles that I have in my life you know should you know should it need to you know need to have and I want to have room that if something comes up for my kids I could I have room to move things around and um I think I think that is definitely key because otherwise yeah. It will really erode on you. And yeah. that's the beauty of, of uh, being independent in this field, right? Because you have the flexibility. Yes. But, but like you said, you just have to be so careful that you're not putting too many things in your in your calendar. Yeah. And I mean, I can only do the best that I, I can do. So I had an organization I've been doing a lot for, but I'm not able to get something done as fast as they want to get. And they're like, okay, we're realizing you have a lot of, other stuff going on. We're going to give that to someone else. I'm like, great. Like, you know, that's awesome. Like, cause I'm about to travel again next week. So, yeah. well, um, it's been great to chat. I want to go ahead and, um, if the listeners want to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to do so? Sure. My cell phone number is 407-691-3772. And you can always email me or just find me on my website, capstackcommercial.com. And that would be the easiest way to connect with me. Awesome. Awesome. And you have a LinkedIn too, and you're yes. all over social media, yeah. but probably email, phone call. Um, Veronica's always awesome about getting, uh, answering her phone. That's like awesome. I'm like, oh, I, I needed you now. And there you are. It's awesome. So, <laughs> well, great. It's been a pleasure. You're one of my most favorite people. And I'm lucky that I get to be in Central Florida with you and get to spend time through CCIM and otherwise, and just wanted some other folks to get to know you. And uh, it's been great. Yeah, I want to thank you. Because if, if, um, if people don't know yet, I think you're the most generous person I've ever met. You are always giving a free advice and and you don't really hold back thinking that, you know, yeah. oh, am I giving too much away? So I want to thank you for that. I am a firm believer that there's plenty of success to go around for, for everyone. 
And even if someone's in my same market and maybe they even do some of the same things like we do, um, I feel like there's so much opportunity. In fact, I, I tell people this is like Orlando and this Central Florida MSA. I mean, oh my gosh, we are in the right spot at the right time. And there's plenty of success to go around for like all of us. And so um, I'm happy to to be a resource to to other women, other people in commercial real estate. And um, I also feel like I have a duty to give back because there are so many people, you know, you've been lucky to have Ben Crosby. I've had Cynthia Shelton. I've had other people in our industry that have been so generous with me. And, um, and I feel like I wouldn't be where I'm at. So um, I, I feel like it's, it's my duty and I don't want to just take, I want to give it back out into the universe. And I think it's going to create good. So yeah. Awesome. Well, I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. Let's continue to go beyond and bringing out and strengthening that performance mindset. This is Amy Calandrino signing off.